Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. And today we're starting uh, a series where we're encouraging more women to take up positions, leadership positions. And as a matter of fact, ahead of the 2020 general elections, we're looking at females who are hoping to take up uh, positions in various as aspects in politics, especially uh, female parliamentary candidates for the 2020 elections. I mean, over the uh, last number of years, we've been fighting for equal representation for women at decision-making um, you know, places as well. And as a result, we want to see how these women are preparing themselves to take up the mantle and hopefully win the elections to represent their constituencies. And we hope that we'll get more females also um, getting the opportunity to lead some of the ministries and the various sectors as well. Great news. Last week, uh, the whole of the country celebrated as Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajiman was announced as the NDC, um, you know, um, Flag, the flag bearers, you know, uh, running mates as well. And even though there were still a few people who weren't too sure of the possibility of her leading the NDC into victory, a uh, majority of us celebrated just for the fact that she is a woman. And that's what we're continuing today. Today we'll be speaking to the NDC parliamentary candidates for Iwutu Senior East constituency. She's actually one of the youngest uh, females that took part in the NDC parliamentary primaries in August 2019 and in her constituency she was the only woman that went against six men and she still managed to sail through and so today we'll get to speak to her to find out more about her and she is Phyllis Na Oyo um, Okuno and she joins us this morning. Good morning, how are you? Hello Phyllis, can you hear us? Good morning. Yeah, good morning Bella. How are you? I'm good. How are you too? I'm fine. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for joining us on air this morning. Congratulations. Uh, still a little late, but anyway, you still managed to sail um, through. Tell me, how was it during the uh, primaries? Because I remember that your constituency was among some 23 constituencies that had the elections postponed because of some disturbances. But regardless, you sailed through as against six men. How did you manage to do that? Okay, um, thank you so much for having me, uh, Bella. It's a great morning. And the name is uh, Phyllis Na Koyo Okuno. Na Koyo, pardon oh, me. I left out the K. Na Koyo Okuno. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, how I managed to pull through the primaries, um, it's hard work and dedication. Um, I contested six strong men. Mm. Um, in Kaswa, the competition was very tight. Um, I didn't win the competition because I am a female. Mm. But if, if you monitored or you strongly or the media strongly monitored the situation in Kaswa, everybody could tell the tension that was building up in Kaswa towards the primaries. Um, how everybody, how each and um, every one of the candidates uh, was pulling out so strong during the preparations towards the primaries. Um, mm. It wasn't easy. We had uh, started campaigning for quite a longer time. Um, not for you personally, I started somewhere 2016, 2017, after uh, the last elections. Mm -hmm. So that was when I started doing my visitations in the very small way, what we called submarine. Um, I had gone through rounds uh, throughout all the constituencies. Uh, the branches. Uh, Kaswa happens to be one of the biggest constituencies and our delegates number two is quite huge. Uh, mm. To manage to get to all the delegates, their meeting places and to even know them personally is not an easy job, Bella. But um, yeah. I would, uh, what I'll say is it's dedication and being focused. Okay. Um, I really dedicated myself to this job and I was focused. Uh, being a woman in this kind of work it's not easy. Um, there are so many obstacles you're going to meet on the way. But I, yeah. as I said, uh, it's, it's just focus, focus, and focus. What, what has and been your message? To the stage. What has been your Sorry? message? And what was your message when you were campaigning, uh, hoping to win votes to represent um, you know, the constituency for your party? Okay. Uh, when I was campaigning, I had some... Um, policies I was driving on. Mm. I was looking for someone who was uh, marketable. I was campaigning on the grounds that the person should be marketable. No In matter what, what the product is. No, um, I'm saying that no matter what the product is, that the people outside should be able to 
to identify themselves with the products. Mm. When you have a product and you have a good brand, which the brand is the NDC, the product is not for you. People should be aligned with the uh, product as well as being aligned with the brand. Okay. When the product is bad, it would, it would make people shun away from the brand. So when you have a good product and you have a good brand, it matches together and people get more attracted to it. Okay. Also, to have uh, someone who can communicate well, someone who can be a better and a proper representative for the people of Eutu Senga East constituency in parliament. Mm. Um, gone are the days where uh, we, 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 we elect people that cannot even speak for themselves in court, sorry to say, but mm -hmm. um, ca are not vocal, um, cannot take certain critical decisions when it comes to policy making, or cannot even uh, lobby their way through to get some good things, some developments for their constituency. Yeah. So there were some of the things I stood on um, during the campaign. Then also for the fact that I am a woman doesn't mean I am a woman. I tell my people that when it gets to the time that we have to wear trousers as mm -hmm. women, we have to. And I'm not going into this quotation because uh, I am a woman, so I expect um, favoritism or the uh, the thing called, oh, let's, let's, Let's give her a, a chance because she's a woman or let a chance. No, um, I want to work hard mm. for it so that at the end of the day, I know that the, the, I, I am worth it. It is not by opportunity or by the virtue that I am a woman. That is why I use the slogan. It is not just a woman, but the woman. I qualified woman with the because uh, the article there to me is very strong. Mm -hmm. There means we are looking at the capabilities and abilities of now for you. Being the woman, not just a woman. Being a woman, we, we have a lot of women. All women are different and uh, unique in their own ways. Yeah. But being that for you and being the woman, I believe I have, I also have my own peculiar, mm. unique way that I'm bringing on board to our political arena to win the seat come December 7th. What were some of the challenges that you faced as you campaigned? Because like you said, you were portraying yourself as the marketable person, the person who could lobby um, and ensure that policies were in favor of the people of Ewutu Senya East constituency. But at the same time, like I said, you went against six men. Uh, I'm sure that they also had their own campaign promises and they had their way of probably attacking you. What was it like? Um, one thing, Bella, um, my, 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 my word was focus. Mm. I, was, I was more focused on the goal than being focused on other campaign messages or our, my uh, competitor's campaign message. Yeah, but I'm not. sure that you face some attacks. So that's what I was asking. That for the, for the attacks, they would come. Be a woman, even if you haven't done, you have done. Mm. Even if you haven't said, you, are, you have said. What did they the say name, you had done? The name calling. Sometimes you'll be called a witch. Sometimes you'll be called a prostitute. All these things, it comes, it is, it is part of the job. Mm. And if you're a woman and uh, you, you accept that these things would come on when you, when you are gaining power or when you are want to achieve certain greater heights, I'm, I'm not sure you'll be so much bothered about the name callings and all those things. Yeah. I was called a lot of things. Okay. I was, I was called a lot. And most of my opponents went on campaign grounds, campaigning for me indirectly because they were selling the negative things that they had uh, painted around me. And trust me, Bella, people wanted to get an encounter with Nakoyu to verify what the things uh, the others are saying, whether it was true or not. Mm. So I was there, people were calling me, now. Nah, this is what I've heard about you. Come, come and speak to your people. Let us know the truth. When I go there, I don't even mention what one has said about me. I, I, I hammer on my five point agenda for my campaign. Mm. I saw my capabilities and my abilities as a woman. I saw my products and my brand as now for you. And I okay. move on. I give them the assurance that as a woman, as their woman, I am going to be there for them as a mother and as a political leader. Absolutely. Now you are going up against a strong contender who is also a woman. She's a minister for special Init initiatives, um, um, Honorable Mavis Hawa Kumsin. And I'm just wondering, is it even better that you're going up against a woman? Uh, does this increase the possibility of that competition between the two of you? Or do you think this is a good thing for you? Um, 
going against um, how I'm saying, well, it is the same, going against the man, going against the woman. But I think uh, what is more interesting is it is a WW affair, as I say to my mm. constituency, a woman to a woman affair. So, uh, you know, women, how we, 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 we do our own thing. Uh, we, we, we agree to disagree, and especially in politics, we agree to disagree. So I, I think what we should be focusing more is uh, politics, what you are bringing on board, mm. what NACOIL is bringing on board, the impact that NACOIL is going to make on the society, the impact that HAWA has made on the society over the eight years. What are what 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 is on the drawing board? Mm. What has the uh, what has the impact on the development of Kaswa been? What have we seen over the eight years as compared to what John Dramani Mahama has done in Kaswa? Mm -hmm. What is now going? Now but John Dramani Mahama is not the MP. So if we're talking about the MP and what they've been able to do, I don't think that we should necessarily bring him into this conversation. This is yes, between I'm the MPs, John no? Dramani Mahama. I'm saying John Dramani Mahama because the NDC didn't have an MP. Okay. Nako, are you there? Uh, this is her third time going. So she's been there for eight years. Okay. So to speak. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying. So we didn't have an MP, but we had an MC that was in charge. So mm -hmm. if I would say either the MC or... Okay, that's not Koyo Okuno, by the way, and she's the so parliamentary candidate. Okay, okay she's back. To, uh, when, we, when we talk of development and infrastructure, mm -hmm. what she has done as an MP and what the NDC party or the MP, NDC government then... Also okay, uh, we're having a bit of a challenge with uh, technology, so forgive us, but she's back. Okay, we're listening to you. So we will try and compare our project to that of hers. So what has she brought on board within these eight years? And what did the MC or John Dramani Mahama through the MC, that is Honorable uh, Adam Snuhu, do within the eight years? So all? tell us, so tell us what your party was able to do as against what the MP was able to do and why you think that it is right. Because um, when you won, you did mention that you were very optimistic the NDC will snatch um, you know, power from the NPP come 2020 elections. And this was because of some things that the NPP could not do, especially in your constituency. So what are some of the things? Okay, um, number one, when it comes to our road infrastructure, Kaswa had one of the most... Ah. Anyway. Okay. Kaswa is a fast growing constituency. Um, through the able leadership of John Dramani Mahama and the MC then that's the Honorable Adam Snuhu, we were able to construct certain roads within the uh, constituency. Now, when we take one major road, which um, everybody even uses now, from Kaswa, the main runabout, to Amasaman, that is one huge road um, that was constructed under John Dramani Mahama. And this road has uh, east traffic, especially for those going to Kumasi and Sawam and all that. Instead of you going through um, Achimota, Mount Seven, now you can go through Kaswa, just 25 minutes, you are at Amasaman. Now, we can also connect it to the Pokpasi Road. Look at the Kaswa to the Bodriasi Road. Now, even our inner roads, there is a place called CP. From Kaswa to CP, all these roads have been tarred. We are looking at the new town roads in Kaswa. We are looking at the Crispo City Road in Kaswa. We are looking at uh, the, the road behind the Pink FM, that is the Zongo Road 94 in mm. Kaswa. Now, let's all see the uh, overhead, the Kaswa overhead. Normally, uh, initially, before this construction of the overhead, when you are coming from Accra, after the tow, or even before the tow, you could spend about four hours just getting to Kaswa. You know we women, especially when you are pregnant, the issue of having a uh, Odemia, the swollen feet, you, mm. you, 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 you are lies from a car and it's even difficult for you to walk. And even the men, some men, you know, Mokaswa, there are a lot of Muslims there. Some people would want their foods to be ready on time. The women will go to town, go to work, go to the market and come home very late, not because they didn't set off early, but because of traffic. Now, at the end of the day, what happened? This flyover had been constructed and now we are able to cross or to get to Kaswa just within five minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is the, uh, the major infrastructure we are talking of in Kaswa. As say that, look, the only day school, secondary school, the Odu Pronkwehi secondary school, 
what's constructed at that John Germani Mahama. Now okay. we have the polyclinic, the Kaswa, or what we call the CP polyclinic. Okay. Well, Nakoya Okuno is a parliamentary candidate for a Wutu now, uh, Senior East. Okay, we lost it there. We're just trying to wrap up here. But what I wanted to find out is, are you promising that you're going to improve uh, the road networks in those areas? Because I know that it is not the job of the MP to construct roads. So is that what you're promising? No, it is, it is, it is, it is for us to lobby. Okay. That is why I say it is for us to lobby. It is not for us to construct. It is for us to lobby that development comes into our constituency. Um, due to okay. these constructions, due to some of these constructions, the roads and all that, it brought a lot of indirect jobs because initially no one was interested in uh, getting the shop by the roadside. Now we have a lot, lots of shops springing up. Now, okay. One of the biggest. Now, now quite, unfortunately, our time, our time is up. Unfortunately, I wish we could keep on talking, but again. Uh, we hope that we do this again so we can give you the opportunity to talk about some of, um, you know, the things you intend to do for your constituency. But thank you for joining us this morning. Sure. Nakoyo Okuno so much for having me. is the parliamentary candidate for uh, Ewutu Senior East constituency. She's representing the NDC and she'll be going against the Minister for Special Development Initiatives, Honorable Mavis Hawa um, Kumsin. And so let's see how that goes. Next week, Monday, we'll be speaking to another female as well. And so if you also uh, want to nominate your female parliamentary candidate, maybe you should join us at TV3 Ghana on social media and let us know who you think we should bring on the show. We're doing this till uh, December 2020, uh, where the elections will happen. We'll be